This is the only musical, the mouth. It's, and hopefully the brain attached to the mouth, right? The brain, more important than the mouth is the brain. The brain is much more important. The brain is much more important. Susan Sarandon needs a bloody asbo. Remember that. It'll come in handy later. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Happy uh, belated 4th of July to everyone. Happy Independence Day. Yep. Uh, happy happy birthday, United Snakes of America. <laughs> yeah, we slept through 4th of July. Our bad. But we're here now. We're doing the 4th of July episode now. So you can, you can either complain about it being late or you can hear this intro and sit on the rest of the episode for less than a year at this point yeah, and listen to it July 4th, 2019. This is just a very early 4th of July episode. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, we're keeping it real. It's me, Matt, and Felix, the OG dry boys on this episode, holding it down. Throwback. Throwback. Keeping it 1600 with my it's friends. 100% cane sugar Coca-Cola. And uh, I thought I'd kick off uh, today's show by uh, giving everyone some reasons to love America. 2018. Hell yeah. If you guys are anything like us, every July 4th, your Twitter feed is nonstop people describing every coup and genocide and war crime ever committed by America to remind How people clever. why America sucks and to let everyone know that America is actually bad, in case you were wondering. Uh, wounded knee much, but... So maybe after that, you're feeling a little down on your nation and you want some reason to be proud. And this, thankfully, these people at Axios well, yeah, this comes gave Axi- it to us. Axios, if you're not familiar, is the world's most well-funded field trip. <laughs> world's most well-funded and longest-lasting field trip. A group of several precocious 45-year-olds who received $700 billion in VC funding to go on a fully funded birthright trip to Washington, D.C. <laughs> and, you know, find out find out what Rick Perry really does on the weekends. <laughs> Axios sounds like a drug for erectile dysfunction that makes you stop getting an erection. <laughs> I don't know why you'd need that. It's, but... a, drug to, it's a drug to combat uh, priapism. Yeah, it's maybe you're, maybe you're an awkward teen in sweatpants uh, uh, or something. Yeah. Try Axios. Axi- it will kill that boner. Axios sounds like, uh, like, the god in the made-up religion that Robespierre found, founded. Yeah, the, the supreme being, called yeah. the supreme being, yeah. yes. No, that's totally true, yeah, the, 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 the avatar of reason, Axios. Uh, no, this is, a, this is a, from Mike Allen, who's like this One sort of... One of the two hogs. Yeah, blind. The god, the sort of the, the, the all-father of Axios, <laughs> which is a... Again, it was like a sort of a spun-off from Politico, but I yeah. think his... Uh, Mike Allen's like big, you know... Big big idea for Axios is that no one wants to read the news. They just want the bullet points from every article. I mean, true. No one reads articles. Yeah. So they just want the headline and the bullet points. Uh, so Mike Allen writes here, reasons to love America 2018. Forget Put DC. It in my veins. Because, like, you know, obviously, like, it's, it's very hip to be down on America. I mean, it's hip to be down on America all the time. But especially now because, you know... Our president is like a senile reality TV show host. Who's epic twat who's, waffle, you know, okay? <laughs> whose mind is literally melting on TV as we, you know, did you, uh, parenthetically, as we ransom children in cages. You hear, did you see the thing he said at the Montana rally? The Elton John oh, thing. It was so cool. It, that is a brain dying <laughs> in life. The most powerful man in America with the ability to, to hypothetically launch a nuclear war at any moment. Just his brain leaking out of his ears in front that, of thousands of hooting swine who. How alarming is it that none of them were absurd, uh, worried? It's like, oh, is he okay? Does he smell toast? Do we need to get him to a hospital? They're just like, yeah, El John, fuck you. People have said that I have had the most wonderful stroke of all time. <laughs> that <laughs> no, one's bra- no one's brain is completely folks, turned folks. to spoiled uh, uh, <laughs> to spoiled applesauce in the way that mine has. <laughs> folks, folks, the clots in my uh, blood vessels, they're huge. They're the biggest. They're phenomenal. I have a blood clot the size of a salami disc in my wrist. Um, It's actually bigger than my wrist. Look, it juts out. It looks like the planet Saturn. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that uh, the Trump comments on using his brain as an organ <laughs> yep, yep. And, and being better than Elton John because yeah. he uses his mouth. Yeah. I don't need no words. Organ. Sometimes you just need your mouth. Uh, and a oh, brain. Well, oh, the, the, no, that <laughs> Elton that's John. the logical conclusion to the tweet where someone's like, your dad, your dad gave his great brain. Damn. And he's like, it's called jeans. That was very funny. <laughs> yeah, that's the logic. My, uh, I'm an artist. My my instrument is giving brain. <laughs> my key instrument is my mouth. I just I wish I could be less of a. They called me Superhead. Okay, <laughs> they took that name from me. I, I blew Jay Z. I wish I could be less of a pedant because every time he says that, what I I can't stop thinking. Yes, yes, your brain's dying, and we're at your mercy, and you're the fucking Crimson King from Stephen King's Dark Tower series. But the big difference between you and Elton John is that those people paid money. And that's the free ticket to go mm-hmm. and watch the fucking orange wet president holler. Uh, I was gonna say uh, Trump's his Elton John comments and like that whole that whole string of 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 dialogue was basically the Trump version of the film Jacob's Ladder. Yes, <laughs> it's just like it's it's all the things that are going on in this weird phantasmagoria that's just happening as your brain dies. Yep, yep. Everyone's got as fucking the, lizard tails. Yeah, as just like the oxygen leaves it leaves its last yep. cell. Yep. Trump, um, but Trump is the only guy to like concurrent with our own reality be the angels in America version of himself. Yeah. <laughs> and but, then and then he's gonna after this reality, this projection is gonna finally flicker away and he's gonna find himself back in like the toilet at studio 54 in 1982 dying of a heart attack <laughs> and that was all just a projection of his he's mind the president and he's shitting and dying <laughs> while cocaine is like around both of his nostrils like a powdered donut that's gonna happen folks. um for for the record here is the, the the full trump statement uh from his montana rally about elton john i have broken more elton john records he seems to have a lot of records and I, by the way, I don't have a musical instrument. That's like the o- opening salvo. Starting off strong. I have broken more Elton John records. What is he talking about? Like, like it- he's talking about uh, attendance at these venues. Oh, okay. And okay. he's, by the way, he's probably obviously lying, or he doesn't know. Oh, and and it's free to go yeah, as well. Exactly. So he goes, uh, and I, by the way, I don't have a musical instrument. I don't have a guitar or an organ. No organ. Elton has an organ. And lots of and lots of other people helping. No, we've broken a lot of records. We've broken virtually every record. Because you know, look, I only need this space. They need much more room. For basketball, for hockey, and all other sports, they need a lot of room. We don't need it. We have people in that space. So we break all of these records. Really, we do it without, like, the musical instruments. This is the only ins- musical, the mouth, and hopefully the brain attached to the mouth, right? The brain. More important than the mouth is the brain. The brain is much more is much more important. The brain I is am, the life. The brain is the life. I am the Duke of New York. I am a number one. <laughs> so, but anyway, bottom line here, it's always been fashionable to, you know, sh- shit on America, but it's never been more fashionable because there literally is nothing to be proud of mm-hmm. i mean what i mean what is wrong with you look at this fucking yeah. country look at the people who live here it's look a at shit our out. leaders look at our government everyone the citizens at, yeah, it's, it's, just, shit, it's shit all the way down it's just a vile uh, pig people we're a pig race <laughs> americans are a pig race so uh reasons to love america 2018 me. uh forget Build me up buttercup Forget DC, forget Twitter, forget what's on your screens. Thank you. I wish I could. And by that means, by screens, he means like literally the news that he reports about this country. Uh, on America's 242nd birthday, the numbers in the poll below should be a hell of a lot higher. And it's like the percent of Americans who claim to be extremely proud to be American. And it's only uh, it's only 54 percent. What the hell? Oh wait, no, no. In 2015, it was 54 percent. In 2018, it's 47 percent. What the hell? How dare you, people? What's so, wrong with you? For the first time ever, less than half, uh, more than half of the country is not extremely proud to be Americans. So, uh, he goes on here to say, uh, our thought bubble. When we begin conflating America with partisan forces on either side, they've won. Ah, those bastards. The strength of our country has been that it transcends the fads, fevers, and foul-ups of the moment. The spoofs and goofs. So here are the reasons to... Here, here's what we should consider when we're assessing the state of our country and how we feel about it. Uh, number one, well, first bullet point. 
the U.S. had more job openings this spring than unemployed Americans. Woo! Let's go. Rick, Rick Flair stomp, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's stopping this train. Are wages going up? No. Well, that's oh, the funny oh, thing oh. is that they keep talking about how there's a labor shortage. Oh, we've got all these jobs and nobody mm. will fill them because they refuse to pay more for the jobs. They refuse to raise wages, which means there isn't a job shortage. It's just there's an, an amount of money that they're willing to pay for these jobs that they refuse to go above. And they're willing to wait out everybody until the economy collapses again and there are more unemployed people that they can pick and keep the wages low because they have such a command and control of the economy that they basically have rejected the old, you know, Adam Smith invisible hand deal, which is that profits go up, uh, you know, uh, 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 employment goes up. That means that, you know, wages have to go up too. Nope, no more. Supply and demand, that whole flow is over. We have control of the entire economic engine. We're going to fucking dictate the terms, which means no more ra- wages go up. I'm so, going to keep it real with you, Chief. Let's go into a deflationary spiral. So Gold standard. There yeah. are, Bring it uh, back. There's a lot of job openings out there. So that's reason number one to be happy. Uh, number two, we travel freely. Every day, 2.5 million of us board 42,000 flights. Wow. Now, that is about the most condescending thing I've ever heard anyone say. That, that's, that's so awesome. Oh, you're down on yourself? Well, you get to go on a big plane ride. That's the kind but, of thing. But half, half the flights in America are people flying to fight their tr- Twitter rivals over arguments they had <laughs> about LeBron. God. The other half are people being catfished. <laughs> Just imagine if you were a little kid and you, 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 your mom was searching for a compliment for you and all she could think of was something like, well, you have very good penmanship. Wouldn't that make you wonder what the hell is wrong with me that she had to reach that deep? But what's so odd is that we travel freely. And I was thinking, well, yes, I mean, America is a confederation of states of which, like, the most important fact is that any of us could travel across their borders yeah. without checking, you know, going into checkpoint right. or showing any official Pretty documentation low bar. Pretty low bar. or anything like that. I mean, I think that is a genuinely good thing. But about it's, also, it's also not true. The they entire made, European Union. It's, yeah, it's also not true. They made 6 9 check in to come to L.A. <laughs> so, like, really, how true is <laughs> How it? free are we, yeah. really? Fact check but on no. you, but, but then like, The EU is just as free. They, well, it took them a while. You but know. they're there. Okay. So what's the big fucking deal? Right. But, but you know, like, I, I, would, I would think that, like, that, that was my thing, is that we have all these borders, but yet we are free to travel across them. I can go from, you know, New York to Massachusetts or Connecticut or, you know, Oklahoma to Nebraska, whatever. We can go anywhere in this country we want. But then he just goes, every day, 2.5 million of us board 42,000 flights. Like, I think that's real, like, like Politico journalist mindset is that he's just thinking about flights. No, that's that, the only way. How, how wonderful it is to get on a plane. Yeah, him and his fellow comp business tra- class yeah. assholes going to fucking Raleigh-Durham I for mean, a convention. Yeah, again, I think it is good. I can get, you know, a flight. Uh, anywhere I want in the country, but when I think of freedom, air travel is not really what well, comes to mind. It's a perfect example though because it's got an invisible sorting mechanism. It, that you don't, you know, you're technically everyone is free to take an airplane anywhere, but in practice, you have to be able to afford it. Yeah, right. Mike. And it, that fact is already a screen. It's invisible and doesn't, and so you get to already be above a higher I clientele. Mean, but again, like this is just such an odd metric to it's go. It's insane. Like, that Forty-two thousand flights happen every day, well, just, and like no well, one why? dies. Who cares? Yeah, what? Like, it's just like yeah. You, congratulations for minimal fucking effort needed to have a country. Like yeah, you say, yeah, like my, yeah, they're not just falling out of the yeah. air randomly. Yeah, we don't have fucking <laughs> banditti on the countryside waylaying uh, passersby. Congratulations, it's not the fucking old west. Yeah, Mike Allen, like the reason. And he takes a he's probably one of those guys who like flies every week, but it's like, oh, I have to go report on like Ben Sa- Ben Sass's integrity barbecue that he's <laughs> yeah. having. Whereas like most people, they're flying because like they finally won the rights to like a specific Android charger and a divorce settlement. <laughs> like it's all very depressed. When you go to the airport, it just like just crushing. It's, it's a just bunch the of people saddest thing you've ever all seen. All going to LA to appear as as uh, as a defendants on judge judy yeah 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 it's like oh i have to go i have to fly back to my home i moved to new york to attend mime school it's not going well <laughs> i have to do my yearly fly back to oklahoma as part of, to blow into a breathalyzer as part of a weird settlement in my dui case anyway let me go through this magnetic machine that definitely gives you cancer <laughs> so they can look at my morgulon's dick <laughs> and then i can pay 17 dollars for a fiji water it's one of the most crushing places you can go it just it's a brutalizing really, yeah, experience yeah. Very sad. It's designed to do it. It's it's um, one of those institutions that exist to, you know, train people. Uh, next up, 25% of us do volunteer service. 
Wow. Yeah. I mean, again, show. it's sort of like. It, I it, mean, I I am part of that twenty five percent in when I fave my followers res- replies to me on Twitter. Yep. But That's like, so, sort wonderful of wonderful like, bit uh, of that's just me giving back to the community. The, the example you used before that like we are we are allowed to take planes in this country and that, that we don't they don't fall out of the sky every day. Now he's saying twenty five percent of us do volunteer service. I feel like if this is meant to make us feel proud to be an Americans, I think that we need to have some sort of contrast with other countries. You know what I mean? Like, is it just like yes, just, exactly. just nobody else is volunteer? That the base, and, is that yeah. the base level? Is that below? How can we judge this without a context? Yeah. But that's kind of how America functions. Well, this is like the, the well, engine of America is belt sanding context. Uh, well, well, this is the next one. It says the U.S. government spends close to $50 billion, which is 1% of the total federal budget authority, helping the world. Holy shit. Plus, wow. Plus billions wow. more from U.S. Oh based my philanthropies. God. How would you tell on yourself like that? You even put in there that it's 1% of the budget. <laughs> and you act like that's fucking. Like you're fucking uh, uh, Gucci Mane at the club with the gun that shoots hundred dollar bills or something. That's so disgusting because one, it doesn't. It's that is very low in world levels, by the way, compared to other developed countries. Mm-hmm. They give way more larger percentage. And f- this is talking about foreign aid. Yeah, and this is the so other that's thing. That's the thing we have context for, and it's and low. The other thing that's funny about that is that the people that are most aggressively proud of American, if you ask them yes. what the government does with 50%. their money, they like the thing they hate more than everything is spending yep. money to help other countries. Think, at number one, you go, we got to get rid of stuff, and they're like, what? All that foreign aid? We're giving all. They all hate us. And we just give them all that money, and it's and they have no idea, and they all think that it's up. It's, they think it's a higher. They think that the percentage we do as the GDP in foreign aid is bigger than the percentage of the country that is under Sharia law. They legitimately think that. Yeah, I feel like the, 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 this thing about um, philanthropies and like, oh, there's billions more from private philanthropies and our government spends all this money on, on uh, foreign aid giving back. Like, oh, I'm, I wonderful. Just, I, I call to mind Fran Lebowitz's uh, great quote about like rich people when they talk about giving back. And she said, uh, here's my advice. Don't take in the first yes. place. Well, you that's know what I mean. Like, it's that, that, that uh, like all of that fucking aid is us putting bullet, putting band-aids on the bullet ho- wounds that we create in other countries. And then because we sprang for like the Flintstones adhesive, we're fucking, we're mother Teresa. Fuck did you off. see, did you see that story from this week about how in Ecuador they had a campaign to like encourage breastfeeding? Yes, oh, and, at the UN. And yeah. the fucking and, Nestle, courtesy, and the and the Trump administration say no, no. It was yeah, no. It was Ecuador. Bro- Ecuador brought a motion to the UN that was designed to uh, raise global awareness about uh, breastfeeding yeah. uh, newborn infants yes. as as like the the best possible mm-hmm. option for early childhood de- 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 development of an infant, <laughs> and uh, everyone was like, "Great, yeah, absolutely, this should sail through," and then the U.S threatened to cut off all of Ecuador's military and the foreign aid that we're so proud of unless they drop this because of the influence of the people who make baby formula. Yep, Nestle. Yeah, so uh, that foreign aid, just playing rocks. Yeah. <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> just play, which is, that's what a global empire means, by the way. Just you go into every other country and tell people what they can do with their tits because like some guy you met at Bohemian Grove who you jacked off with is well, like, I mean, it's uh, like, come on, my, my son also wants to go to mime school. You know, it's like the fucking Rome, Roman Empire marches into your village, cuts everyone's heads off, sells everyone into slavery, takes it over, and then they build a fucking bridge to make it easier for the troops to get in and garrison it. And then you complain to them, this is bullshit. And they say, what? Look, we built this bridge. Those aqueducts are still standing, yeah. though. So You're welcome. Um, here we go. Uh, next, next item on the Love America agenda. Americans are part of just 39% of the world population judged by Freedom House to be free. <laughs> wow. We got 10 out of 10 freedoms. By the way, I... From Raytheon Presents I, Freedom House. I would ha- I, again, I have no idea what Freedom House is. Oh, it's a, it's a fucking CIA front think tank. Yeah, I was going to say... I it's would, a Cold War thing. I would bet any amount of money it's some incredibly right... It's like those things... Remember when we did with uh, with Libya, I think, the, the Cato Institute's mm-hmm. ranking of uh, like the freest countries in the yep. world or the freest states in America... And it's like all like the, the thing they it's like occupational licensing is like the number one most mm-hmm. free thing. So yes. like Saudi Arabia is like freer than Ireland mm-hmm. by their mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. you know this is criteria. Um, so yeah, no Freedom House. So we, we were joining forty percent of the world, which again it's like not that exclusive. That's you a know? lot of people. It's like freedom we're, we're, exists what are we, in three per no three percent of the world's population. 
So that's way more. If than by ours. freedom they mean like you know liberal democracy. By the way, just and- parenthetically, uh, one of the fellows at Freedom House is a guy named Arch Puddington. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck you. No, he's not. And look at his face. Whole, we should make. We should honestly shit. make. Bro, wear an eye patch. Exactly. We should make this the image for the week show, just so people have a context for what I'm talking about. <laughs> When I talk about Arch motherfucking Puddington. Uh, Arch, could you stop coming the second we take this photo? <laughs> no. Okay. Anyway, fine. it's a great organization. So it's just like the U.S. government says the U.S. government rocks. So it's wow. Like, yeah, but like if, but, uh, even by their, you know, paltry standards for what freedom means, which I'm assuming means like some combination some of market like, shit. Just, you know, liberal, free markets liberal and liberal democracy, yeah. basically like, you know, quite a bit of the rest of the world has that. It's mm-hmm. not like. You know, if we're again, if we're looking for things to be proud of as an American specifically, like that's also a very weak uh, statistic. Okay, next next item: uh, violent crime in the U.S. has fallen sharply over the past quarter century. I mean, again, that's like congratulations, that's, that's good news. Well done. But you know, I don't. But once again, that's like <laughs> yeah. okay, we aren't murdering each other as much as we were. Congratulations. <laughs> and also, why like, was it so high in the first place? And also, like you, asked- we've got our drinking under control. The United yeah, States. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you also ask the people, like the foreign aid thing, you ask the people who are the most assholishly proud of America. Yeah, once again. What they think violent crime is. Like, it's yeah, 5 the murder rate's about 120%. Yep. Yeah. So the world they live in, this is so crucial. So the world that this person lives in, the person that loves America, lives in, is one in which the foreign aid that this, th- this guy says is proof America is good is bad and way worse than it really is. And at the same time, he thinks that the crime which this guy says makes us good because it's low, is actually incredibly high. So the American who loves America loves a version where everything is bad, according to this guy, where we're, doing, we're, we're giving tons of money to bad foreigners and the crime is out of control. Uh, okay. And he lives in a country where we're very generous and crime is low. This is, this is the next bullet point. Crime in New York City plunges to a level not seen since the 1950s. So he's just padding out yes. this, these reasons. That's the same... That's the same reason. That's, that's, that's just that's a subset. Exact same that's thing. just a subset. And again, as someone who lives in New York City, I'm glad that crime is historically low at the moment. But again, like the way... Like, you, you think for Donald Trump, for instance, believes that to be true. No. And also the way he, that we created this crime drop, I mean, a lot of it was just brutal authoritarianism that's only getting worse. Okay. Uh, next up... Powered by a booming stock market and a strong economy, mm. charitable giving in the U.S. last year exceeded forty four hundred billion dollars wow. in a single year for the first time. I feel like that's just a, a repetition of our like. No, it's the, it's the same thing. It's just another generosity. Fact, but also, that's even worse because when you're talking about charitable giving, you're mostly talking in terms of the raw numbers. You're talking about some asshole having a dedicated uh, paying like the Philharmonic to do a, a wing of the their their theater with his name on it or something or buying a library at their alma mater that they're going to get their name on just giving money to already incredibly rich nonprofit organizations so that they can put their name on yeah, yeah hard, like, and so that they can have like yeah i'm I, i'm charitably giving a, a new really luxurious seats to the opera that i attend 40 times a year like that's charitable giving yeah, yeah most uh most major universities now are just like hedge funds with lectures attached yeah and yeah, no, you can still give to them. It's still technically charity. But even if you still take that and there's still like a few hundred billion of charitable donations kicking around, it doesn't. It, you look at the other numbers, like you look at, say, like natal mortality oh, yeah. in yeah. the United States. It's very not clear good, it's not even scratching the surface. Yeah, the charity is not improving doing people's it. lives yes. on a large scale. Charity, private charity is completely ineffective yep. at, at any of the systemic problems that yep. you would get from like you know, actually forcing people to make a contribution that isn't like, oh, yeah, could you name the, uh, could you name this the My Name Plus Richard Wagner Opera Center? Hi, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a opening a chain of soup kitchens for in the indigent where the only thing you have to do is dance for me, and then I'll pay, and the, I'll give you food. There was, um, I just, I, I, there was like some, like, dumb op-ed in the New York Times a couple months ago, and I just, like, Looked up the guy because I was interested in in him because he was like so you tell he was like the non cynical rich person he just sort of happened mm-hmm. into a bunch of money and he wasn't he's like an evil person but he doesn't think he's evil and under whoever this was I forgot who it was I posted this section of their Wikipedia where it was their charity and their charity was that they take 
shrapnel from mass shootings and sell necklaces to like raise what? awareness of gun control. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah that's like a All good right. portion well, of yeah, charity. That, yeah, that's that type of bullshit. That's yeah. that's just but a slice of the four hundred yeah. million dollars we spent. We, <laughs> yeah, we spent Sumner every Redstone year. gave another hundred million dollars to his keeping my wife out of the house foundation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is the this is the last reason, and it may be my favorite. About 1.3 million of us are on active duty in the military. Awesome. And 20 million. 100% <laughs> freaking awesome, my man. And 20 million of us once served. But per the Pentagon, the number of Americans with firsthand experience with service members or veterans has declined precipitously since the beginning of the all volunteer military in 1973. So he's saying that, like, even but at the, the end, no, the number like, actually the, things are bad. Well, yeah, he's not going, enough of us know the he's truth. He's saying that, like, uh, a reason to love America is 1.3 million of us are active duty troops. But he's also saying it's bad because the number of Americans who are friends with yeah. active duty troops are declining. And what I wish he would have said is I wish he would have gotten the number of like, you know, the, uh, the number of Americans who have a firsthand combat experience in one of America's wars is rapidly declining. Let's do better. Let's get that number higher. Yeah, come on, folks. <laughs> the number, the we need no mass conscription and human wave attacks. The number of Americans who would have been in special forces if they didn't pull their hamstrings is at an all-time <laughs> high of 13 million Ohioans. <laughs> we're gonna fucking we're gonna invade Iran, Iran, and use the same tactics they used against Iraq. We're gonna do human waves of of, of conscripted Midwesterners. Bazij so, versus Bazij. Uh, Mike uh, closed it out by saying, "There's plenty we can do better, and that our leaders should do better." I don't know. I we, think we're probably like, <laughs> "No, nah, we're fucking we're killing doing the dude. best we can." No, nah, we, we're giving a, a cent of our fucking GDP to. And then he says, "Come on, we write about that on Axios all day, every day." Axios mm. AM's highest pursuit is to give you a clear-eyed view of a disruptive world so you can make smarter decisions. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. But a disruptive world? <laughs> he this said is, a, a this disruptive is like, world. This is like the news service in... in Wait a minute. The, in, wor the is, world's what gets disrupted. Axios is like what the people in Demolition Man read. For the news. <laughs> this is so bad. Have a joy-joy day. Yeah. Uh, but no... The, the world is what gets disrupted. Don't, th don't think too hard about it, Matt. It yeah. It can't yeah. be it's disruptive. A, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's being disrupted by Axios, but they're here to give you the information. Oh, they're here to give you the uh, the statistics that you need to make sharp, clear-eyed decisions. Oh, I feel faint. So, uh, moving on now, I'd like to turn on this uh, our 4th of July episode to a small beach, oceanside community, a small <laughs> summer town. And I'd like to remind all you people that amity means friendship and our beaches will be open for the 4th of July, regardless of what you've heard about it. There is a minor incident with a, a, a barracuda of which, some kind. Which spelling of minor? <laughs> There's nothing to do with the guy we're talking about. Nothing. Oh, nothing. Okay. Absolutely zero. Uh, zero. Zero. We are, Allegedly. We are traveling to the island of Martha's Vineyard. Martha's to, Vineyard. To check in with one of its more famous residents in his now very public struggle uh, to get invited to parties. <laughs> I'm talking, of course, about Alan Dershowitz. I'm leaving on, on a jet, jet plane. plane. Don't, Don't put my <laughs> name in the flight record. <laughs> Wi-Fi lit. Uh, yeah. Alan Dershowitz. Um, Been in the news. He's had a lot of lives. And I think now, I appreciate now that he's becoming American Nausgaard. <laughs> yeah, just like a heavily document. There have been like seven New York Times articles about this guy's boring arguments at his mm -hmm. vacation home. That's now scar. That's like pure minutia. Someone tallied this, this is up his the, struggle. There were, I think, four different pieces in the New York Times this week about uh, using using a total of six writers Insane. to cover the travails of Alan Dershowitz and and what he claims is his sort of being blacklisted. From Martha's Vineyard for his very brave and principled stand to, uh, to I don't know, defend, defend yeah. Trump from the Mueller investigation. The obscenity of this cannot be overstated. Of in this time, in this moment in world history, devoting irreplaceable resources of this magnitude at the most influential uh, uh, news organization in the world, probably, and use it for this end. Obscene. Disgusting. So let's, diving into it... Uh this is a, 
uh, from Chilmark, Massachusetts, in an article by Jess Bidgood and Julie Bozeman. Mm. Uh, for ye- that's, that's two uh, writers you who could have been literally doing anything you else. You needed it. So uh, for years, Alan Dershowitz, the lawyer and professor emeritus at Harvard Law School, has been a garrulous fixture in this handsome, gray-shingled town on Martha's Vineyard. He holds court from a rocking chair on the porch at the Chilmark General Store, drinking coffee and greeting fellow regulars. He strolls down Lucy Vincent Beach, gabbing on his cell phone along the way. Oh, my God. Imagine you spent three decades, like, artificially increasing the the price of copper in some hapless nation in, like, the Horn of Africa, just selling away, chipping away little bits of your soul, just being the worst person you can be. Also, you could buy this vacation home here, and your reward is you walk into the general store, and this ancient corpse is like, <laughs> "How are you doing?" Ah, uh, people are being very unfair to Trump. <laughs> like, I'm just imagining. Yeah. I'm now imagining Dersha what, being garrulous and walking along the beach, and then just like coming up from bo- coming up behind someone and just going, "Why aren't you going in the water? <laughs> Get in the water. Get in there." Did you all see that picture of him in that skin tight, sort of rayon sh- uh, shirt? Ugh. There's this picture of him. He's wearing this this very 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 garish shirt, and it's skin tight. Ugh. He is looking yeah, low he, key he, thick. He looked bad, dude. Like I jacked off to it, but I wasn't even think- <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about him when I came. He was, he looked he was dressed like, like awful. He was dressed like one of the guys from Entourage when they go to the club. It was grotesque. So, uh, but he says, but this summer, Mr. Dershowitz says that because he has expressed views that back President Trump, he no longer feels so welcome on the vineyard, a summertime epicenter of progressive values, money, and sheer democratic power in the United States. I never thought I would see McCarthyism come to Martha's Vineyard, but I have, Mr. Dershowitz wrote in an opinion column last week in The Hill, revealing that he has been on the receiving end of a social chill from friends here. By the way... McCarthyism doesn't refer to social chill. It doesn't refer to being socially ostracized no. from your friend group. Yeah, it refer- it's quite a bit stronger than Literally that. Literally imprisoned yeah, yeah, or that, had your livelihood destroyed. That's what McCarthy did. He held hearings where he's like, um, "Why are forty-two of my mutual followers still following this account?" <laughs> so for them, it is enough that what I have said about the Constitution might help Trump. He wrote, "So they are shunning me and trying to ban me from their social life on Martha's mm. Vineyard." So, um, little baby. This really is Navisgard because everyone in this story just there is no hero in this story. No one in this story is good. Oh God! No. And these, the, these like self righteous fucking rich ass. I want to get to the. I want to get to the, yeah. uh, the the Martha's Vineyard crowd that's shunning him for defending Trump in a second. But I, I need I need to go now to even worse than this. A second New York Times article by. Their big shot political reporter named Jeremy W. Peters. This is a guy. This guy rocks. This guy came on my radar just last week because he said one of the dumb. He is a national political reporter for the New York Times. And he said something to the effect of using the label right wing to you know paint this broad <laughs> stroke of everyone from a Trump supporter to libertarians shows how uh, ignorant you are of the sh- many shades of being conservative. Mm. He was literally saying that, like, you know, you're attacking me for saying this, but you're missing the huge difference between Ron Paul supporters and Donald Trump voters. We, they, we've, we've covered this before. We, everyone who voted for, anyone who seriously supported all Ron Paul in 2012 or before that are all on the Trump train. They all it, turned into frogs. The many shades of conservatism from Ulster Orange to Division Azul. <laughs> That's very so this, good. He goes, um, <laughs> I had called Mr. Dershowitz on Tuesday to tell him I was going to be on the island for a long planned vacation, and I suggested we get together to talk about the stir he kicked up when he wrote in a com- blah blah blah. Uh, so this asshole is going oh, there. Sp- I can't believe he so, spoke to Muffy that way. This asshole is going to the vineyard for his fucking vacation, and he's got to make it a work vacation by getting in on this Alan Dershowitz kick and giving him one of the most kiss ass interviews I've ever read. So he goes, uh, Dershowitz says here, I'm enjoying this, he told me. It's mm-hmm. a red badge of courage. He said he believes political debate today has essentially degenerated into a fight over one question. Are you for or against Mr. Trump? We live in a Red Sox-Yankees world, he said, and you have to pick a team. <sighs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> Mr. Dershowitz said... Uh, he said, the local library, Mr. Dershowitz said, told him they can't find the time for him to give his regular summer talk this year. Blah, blah, blah. 
He goes on here. He says, he goes, you're no stranger. This is where the actual interview starts. Uh, Peters, uh, Jeremy Peters says, you're no stranger to defending people who are unpopular. Is this actually worse than when you defended O.J. Simpson? He says, Durst responds, of course, or Klaus von Bülow, or Leona Helmsley, or Michael Milken, or Mike Tyson. Just in case you forgot about all of those other utterly reprehensible and evil people he's uh, helped uh, weasel their way out of legal trouble, uh, he's there to remind you that, yes, indeed, I was there helping them as well in a very principled way. He goes, this is much worse than all that, because in those cases, people were critical of me, but they were prepared to discuss it. They were prepared to have a dialogue. Here, the people that I'm objecting to want to stop the dialogue. They don't want to have the conversation. It will upset people at the dinner party or on the porch. This is like safe spaces in colleges. Does he think that like the entire town of Martha's Vineyard or wherever he goes, like people are just, uh, I don't know, obligated to have a dialogue with him about some fucking interminable. Yes. Like about Trump. And that just shows the, the utter hypocrisy of conservatives who claim what, the thing that they believe in politics is that politics are not totalizing, right? Like there's political sphere and then there's the market and the real world and they don't... And sports. Yeah, it's like yeah. you don't... The, sp- politics stops and you can't use politics to control other people's lives. You have to let them live. And that's what they believe about politics. But right here you're seeing that for conservatives, having power in the real world in terms of writing laws and controlling legislation and, and, and even directing the the political debate that's not enough you need everyone in the social sphere to accept you too you need to get respected for having political views you need to be indulged for having political views you have to get a hearing that no reasonable person could argue you deserve as just some asshole but to their mind, political power extends tendril-like down to the roots of well, all social interaction. Well, you say that, Matt, but uh, Peter's asked him, you reject the label Trump supporter, don't you? He says, absolutely. I'm a Hillary Clinton liberal Democrat who's trying hard to restore Congress to the Democrats. So he goes, you enjoy being provocative and contrarian. I'm a teacher and a professor. My job is to provoke and stimulate conversation. The thing I hate most is people who want to shut off the conversation. Oh, the, no. people that, the, the thing I hate the most is people who just don't want to fucking talk to me. Oh, or deal awful. With <laughs> no. So he goes, You're required to listen to me. But listen to how Peter is like flatters him with like, he goes, people only hear one word, Trump. Durst responds, that's what reminds me of McCarthyism mm-hmm. when you couldn't speak out on certain issues. I'm not comparing myself, pause. First of all, <laughs> I'm enjoying this. So understand that. I'm actually laughing. You have to pretend to be dumb because once you get sophisticated and nuanced, you're politically incorrect. There's no nuance. There's no sophistication about this. Don't try to slice the salami thinly. This is just baloney. I grew up in New York and I'm a Red Sox fan. Damn, I can see how this guy got so many people off murder raps. (laughs) I can see why you would want to hang around him having a dinner party for four hours. So he goes, uh, Peters continues, and he asks, he says, during Vietnam in the 1970s, you had thousands of people dying every month, a president who had so clearly broken the law. How is that somehow not as bad as today? Because people think, people seem to think today is worse. By the way, speaking of Martha's Vineyard, someone did try to literally push Robert McNamara off the ferry going to Martha's Vineyard (laughs) at the height of the Vietnam War. So if someone sees Dersh on the ferry, I'm not saying do that, but just be aware of the history that's come before you. Uh, He goes, with Trump, it's personal. His personal style is so confrontational. He provokes. He's a brilliant politician, and let me tell you why. He's pushing Democrats to the left because extremism provokes extremism, and the Democrats can't win from the left. They can only win from the center in a national election. Mm. So his fondest hope is that someone from all these jewel-encrusted vampire millionaires all agree on this point. I like that he says uh, they can only win from the center and just a bit higher. He just said, I'm a Hillary Clinton Democrat. Again, this goes back to basically our last two shows. They they you tried that you lost to Donald Trump. No. So he goes, he goes, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, you know, uh, these articles in The Times and The Globe may hurt me on Martha's Vineyard, but they help Trump. Hmm. If if there's one thing you quote me on, I want it to be that. So that's Dersh in his own. Also, I do not know what happened to my first wife. Okay, this is where I'm going. With this. this is where I'm going. This is where I'm going with this segment. Like you know, you see Alan Dershowitz on TV, and you think to yourself, "God, what a what a tiresome asshole this guy is." I can't believe I have to see his dumb, ugly face on TV. For these people on the Vineyard, 
Uh, they have clearly uh, they clearly have a problem with him now because he has gone on Fox News or Tucker to defend Trump from the Mueller investigation because this is what really excites and animates oh, them yeah. is is you know uh, impeaching oh, Trump yeah. and high crimes and misdemeanors. Daddy Mueller spank me. Here's my comment: um, In the years before this, uh, did none of these people want to socially ostracize Alan Dershowitz for uh, fucking kids, <laughs> allegedly? Yeah. Or maybe also allegedly killing his first wife. Yeah. Here's or, okay. Or, listen, or, real, or, real quick. Or, or any of the things he said about Israel. No. Uh, of course yeah. Not. Of course not. That's all acceptable to them. Because uh, guess what? Half of those motherfuckers are probably on the Jeffrey Epstein flight logs as well. Oh yeah. Just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, Alan Dershowitz was one of many names that turned up on the flight logs of Jeffrey Epstein's private plane. Yep. He, Alan Dershowitz took se- many private flights with someone who was once his friend, he, who he now claims he is not a friend with and only spoke to about raising money for Harvard. But they have a friendship that goes back to 1997. And uh, Alan Dershowitz, and again, again, in case you don't know, Jeffrey Epstein is like the millionaire financier who went to jail for um, suborning, sex, suborning sex from a minor. Could have done much worse time. But what do you know it? Alan Dershowitz, who again was on his private flights, to his, quote, Lolita Island. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who literally had a ring of underage girls acting as his sex slaves. This is is documented in federal court. Wouldn't you know it, Alan Dershowitz was involved in his legal defense and was also involved in, he was involved in crafting the plea that sent Jeffrey Epstein to prison for a very short amount of time for what the crimes he did, but most importantly, kept it out of federal court and also kept any of the uh, the victims or accusers from testifying yep. or releasing any of the other names of, like, or you know, naming anyone else. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump in 2002 tells New York Magazine, I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. No doubt about it. Jeffrey enjoys his social life. So uh, I'm reading. Hey, for- uh, hashtag QAnon. Uh, I look I'm reading. For- oh, he was going undercover, dude. <laughs> I'm reading. Donald Trump was going undercover on that plane. Uh, I'm reading that from Gawker, who did a great uh, write up of this when uh, these these names got uh, leaked. He goes, uh, what's more, I'm ready now, what's more, Dershowitz told American lawyer he is loyal to his wife who is always by his side. I've been married to the same woman for 28 years. She goes with me everywhere. People know that I won't argue a case or give a speech unless my wife travels with me. This is not the profile of someone who screws around. But according to the flight logs, Dershowitz was close enough to Epstein to have accompanied him on a flight from Palm Beach to New Jersey's Teterboro Airport as early as December 1997. On that flight, the pair was accompanied by a number of people, one unidentified female, a Hazel, a, and also Claire. The logs also show Dershowitz on a flight from Bedford, Mass. to Teterboro in October 1998, a flight from Teterboro to Martha's Vineyard in 1999, and a 2005 trip from Massachusetts to Montreal, showing him traveling with Epstein, Tatiana, and others. One thing the logs don't show, Dershowitz's wife traveling with him. He is denied all of this. Uh, He says he claims that his relationship with Epstein was entirely professional and that allegations that the two were chummy were a total bum rap. Okay. He was specifically named by one of Jeffrey Epstein's accusers as a person that Jeffrey Epstein made her have sex with. This was in this was in federal court. I just if we are shutting out somebody who is exactly like a Frank Miller character (laughs) from public life, like a villain in a Frank Miller (laughs) graphic novel. What have we become? Listen to this. Dershowitz would later play a significant role in negotiating the NPA on Epstein's behalf. Indeed, Dershowitz helped negotiate an agreement that pr- provided immunity from federal prosecution in the Southern District of Florida, not only to Epstein, but also to any potential co-conspirators of Epstein. Thus, Dershowitz helped to negotiate an agreement with a provision that provided protection for himself against criminal prosecution in Florida for sexually abusing Jane Doe number three. Mm. So this guy knows the law. And I think it's interesting, like his two most famous cases or O.J. Simpson, which we all know about, and Klaus von Bülow. Klaus von Bülow, if you don't know about, was another very rich man who very, whose wife died under very suspicious circumstances. You can take this moment to cue up your Menneker Movie Corner uh, 
pick of the week for Barbet Schroeder's Reversal of Fortune. If you'd like to see Jeremy Irons in his Academy Award winning role playing Klaus von Bülow, highly recommend it. It's a great film. Jeremy Irons, who has pretty much become Klaus von Bülow later in his <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, it says, Dershowitz says, you know, I've been with my wife for 28 years. That's his second wife. Yeah, yeah. He had a wife before that who also mm. died under very suspicious mm. circumstances. Mm. Here's what we know. Uh, according to like of what, of what little can be is, is he's done a, ma a magnificent job of scrubbing her from the public record. But apparently she committed suicide after a very brutal uh, child divorce and child custody battle in which she alleged physical and emotional abuse on behalf of Mr. Dershowitz. That she then died very mysteriously, and there's almost no mention of her. But I suggested it before. Google Alan Dershowitz, first wife, for some interesting reading material. I just think it's weird that like his most famous legal maneuver is helping rich men get a very obviously guilty rich men getting away with murdering their wives when his first wife died under very suspicious circumstances in the middle of a bitter divorce and custody battle. Odd. Then add to that his close I'm sorry, close relationship with an actual pedophile and sex trafficking psychopath like Jeffrey Epstein who had a personal plane that basically was a prostitution service for his very rich and powerful friends, including Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton and Donald Trump and Steven Pinker of Harvard as well. Mm. Wait, Steven Pinker was on He's that? in the flight logs. Mm. Again, like this is, this, mm. is, this is hearsay. I'm sure as Mr. Dershowitz would tell you, like this wouldn't hold up in court. I'm just saying like these, these, are, these are the facts that we know and you can judge for yourself. This is the person whose social life became the all-abiding obsession of the most powerful and influential news organization in the world and for the past week. Nowhere in those six art in the five or six articles or the, even in this interview with Jeremy Peters did they ask him anything about his connection to Jeffrey Epstein no. and his appearance on his private planes. Well, that's not about his ideas. And this is really about the closing of people's minds. You know what? I really hate when people will try to shut down that conversation. Yeah. He also mentions uh, in his t many his many TV appearances on this. He uh, he compares it to McCarthyism, and he also compares it to college safe spaces. Mm. You know, oh, of course, that little Absolutely. buzzword yes. that will activate the pleasure centers and the the oh, in the yes. in the minds of oh, the, yeah. you know uh, Tucker Carlson's audience. And he mentions it in the New York Times as well. Uh, it's again very funny that he would mention uh, trying to shut down debate on college campuses because he has literally been at the forefront of of attacking any university, public or private, that will host. Any, any speaker, kind of BDS. any kind of yep. BDS, any kind of just not, forget BDS, Punish them. And just any Palestinian speaker Punish on them. campus, Punish he them. has demanded that he be allowed to appear on stage together and offer a rebuttal. And if not, then their funding if, should yeah, be cut. Yeah, exactly. So he is um, very much at the forefront of creating a safe space for uh, you know Zionism on American campuses and has attacked Finkelstein. And Finkelstein, again, look it up. Finkelstein found not just fall outright falsehoods in Alan Dershowitz's case for Israel, where he claimed um, 70,000 Palestinians were exiled in the Nakba. Uh, add a zero on there, pal. Uh, but also outright plagiarism in his footnotes. Uh, got Norman Finkelstein denied tenure and has since moved on. So this is Alan Dershowitz, and this is, this is the guy who's been given basically unfettered access, not just to Fox News, but to the New York Times to uh, paint this uh, case about himself as a kind of the, the lone principled man, the guy who was born in New York who roots for the Red Sox. That's how Just he thinks. Just a grotesque yeah. gremlin. And um, the thing is, it's And not I'm sorry, even... like, also probably a fucking rapist. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly you know, yeah. I mean, cover our asses here, but, like, I'm just saying, like... But it's not even... Take all that holistically. What the fuck were you doing on Jeffrey Epstein's private plane? Just... The thing I don't even understand from the, the New York Times' point of view is you can't even use the cynical explanation of, well, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. The American people aren't baying for Dersh news. Dersh is not a popular and, and well-known figure across America who has a lot of fans who are invested in his social life. He is not Ariana Grande. But their commitment to just maintaining this discourse about discourse in the face of just collapsing reality... Uh, it's 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 insane. It's it, it's a cargo cult at this point. It's like they're they're putting they're sucking saying Novenas as the fucking ship sinks. I mean, I want I wanted to talk about Dershowitz because I find him so personally repellent uh, for so many reasons. But like, this is also another example of again 
Donald Trump was on those flight logs. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump was very close friends with Jeffrey Epstein. Okay. And I, I just think it's interesting now that like a huge part of Trump's support, like we've talked before about the QAnon people and so much of the, cons- you know, conspiracy theories that now dominate our time all revolve around child sexual abuse and, and child yep. trafficking for the purposes of prostitution. And these people, they seem to see evidence of this everywhere except for actual documented cases of child abuse yep. and molestation. Uh, just this week now, what is it? House GOP, uh, Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan, Freedom Caucus Freedom head. Ca- head of the Freedom Caucus. Now seven former uh, students of his or uh, have said that- He pulled a paterno. Yeah, he was the Joe Paterno to the a Jerry Sandusky figure in this college wrestling yep. team. How, how, just like statistically, you're the Republican Party. How do you have two guys over the course of the decade in house leadership who are pedophilia affiliated wrestling coaches? <laughs> how? It's a style. How? Felix, by, I would say by 2024, a third of the GOP caucus will be. Uh, People who appeared on sexually a predator. sexually abusive wrestling coaches. Yeah, I mean that's the way forward. That's <laughs> yeah. like, clearly that's yeah, what and not just won. that. Staying in Ohio in the Cincinnati area, there was just an article um, their, right their here. Test run on pedophile wrestling coaches was like Dennis Hastert, who's yeah. like, we need another wrinkle to his character. Oh, he's beholden to a local ice cream baron <laughs> in Illinois. Like that's just the third thing we need for him. <laughs> a third kind of heat. Oh my but god. But yes, a judge and Trump supporter in the Cincinnati area was convicted of human trafficking. He was he was a he was uh he was a conservative activist and a judge. A hanging judge. He was a hanging judge known for his draconian yes. treatment of criminals. Law and order. He was wow, a it's... longtime conservative activist who apparently also was a trailer park slumlord who awesome. uh would uh sell heroin to his teenage renters and then make them teenage runaways and give them heroin and make them pay rent in sexual favors. Yep. With under, um, you know, minors. Again, young girls in exactly the same way Epstein was, was doing. Yeah, you know, that sounds bad, but I would rather go to a, a big empty field in New Mexico or in Arizona next to an old camp with some fucking knocked over bottles where I've decided is a rape center and just kick over a... Uh, the, the fucking tanks of water that people put out for migrants. That's that's doing more to stop child abuse. Well, what I mean, what what did we say? They want a quest that can never actually be completed. Yep. Because they're chasing a phantom when the real fucking goblin is out there. Yeah. And then what they do is they say, you know, QAnon was talking about now. Well, this is an op by the feds. This is an op by the the deep state that's opposing Trump. Uh huh. They are creating false accusations. So actual cases of pedophilia, actual victims, fake, false flags, a- anything you can just make out of whole cloth on Twitter is way more real, even though there's no victim and no even conceivable person associated with it. For our most online Americans, uh, nothing is real. Nothing, nothing is real. Nothing is real anymore. Yep. I mean, the- everything is as real as everything else. Yeah. It's just a smooth, flat plane. And you can just rearrange the elements however you want because they all have equal weight. Everything is either like Russian active measures or it's the Hollywood pedophiles creating smokescreen for you. Nothing's actually happening. Uh, everyone who doesn't talk to you in your life anymore is part of that conspiracy. Yeah. 100% freaking awesome, my it's, man. It's, it's just astounding that there's not been any piece of art really that I can think of that has captured this sense of unreality that is totally pervasive now. But I mean, damn, you're talking about the Matrix again? <laughs> That did not do a great job of it. I don't know. I mean, I, I just think it's it's so uh, perverse in its in, in people's just stead, adamant and steadfast refusal to recognize the everyday evil that is just in front of their face, mm-hmm. and instead enlisting all of it into this baroque and idiotic conspiracy in which Donald Trump is somehow a good person. Yeah, that's the most insane thing about it. Well, yeah, it's, that's it's the not, even, of all of it. It's not even like. The like secret arrests or what that's not as insane as the thing where it's like Donald Trump is altruistic. Yes. Yeah, or that, he would sacrifice is, anything for anybody at any time. The keystone delusion that undergrads every other delusion is their fundamental 
hallucinatory idea of who Donald Trump is as a person. This venal monster who encapsulates every negative trait. He is like if they know a cross seven, who's yeah, they, stupid. Just a reptilian monster. Like if you stuffed a sack with the seven deadly sins and put it in a fucking microwave for an hour, it would be Donald Trump. Just v- disgusting, viscerally repellent on every level. But you, if you, the, 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 the space that has to be traversed mentally to turn that person into a harbinger of good, who cares about human beings, cares about doing the right thing, has some conception of God or, or duty, that is such a Herculean, mind-breaking leap that after that, everything else is child's play. Oh, how hard is it going to be at this point to say that, you know, oh, Hillary Clinton, she flew commercial instead of private from D.C. this week. Well, that means she's clearly having her accounts frozen and is about to be arrested. And by the way, from the, uh, the, news, from what, the stories I've read about Jim Jordan, uh, like he was way fucking worse than Paterno in yes. terms of like how how well, he was not how did he even win? Thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in terms of how literally incredible his yeah. idea that I didn't know what was yeah. going on. Yeah. At least Paterno was like actually senile yes. at some point. For a lot of yeah, it, yeah. you're like yeah. Jim Jordan is like 37. Yeah, <laughs> like he's oh and apparently everyone knew about this this doctor who who apparently. Uh, like you would go in, like you know, for uh, having like the wrestling ear or like a, a hurt cauliflower thumb. ear, cauliflower ear, or, like a thumb, and he'd be like, "Okay, strip those shorts off," <laughs> you know. Like Jesus he, would, he would have, Christ. he would touch your dick yeah. every time you went in for anything. Oh boy, Jesus Christ! Oh God, it's just it's. Uh... It's so gross. And like this asshole is probably he's not going to resign. No, no he's not. He's, he's not going to resign. Stay in. He's going to stay Eric, in. Eric you know Greetens, what? Eric Greetens, like the. Just yeah, another fucking sexual predator. Who's yeah, ho- like, the rapist, the rapist, o- thief, openly, Navy Seal. Yeah, yeah, openly in power, governor of Missouri hasn't resigned. No, he resigned. Oh, he resigned. Okay, but it's like how long it, it took, took him, him? An insane amount. How of time. fucking long it took him? It was that months was after insane. he got indicted for for fucking revenge porn. He survived for months after being indicted for sex crime. And the GOP put out a statement after he got charged that it was a politically motivated fake news. And you know what's funny here? This this goes back to when we, like when we uh, our last episode when we talked to, uh, about Dan Fife Dog and his book. And it reminds me of what I said: like that these people, they absolutely can never identify a villain or connect a mm-hmm. villain, an obvious villain or evil act with a policy or a party. And why can't they do that with Jeffrey Epstein and Trump? Oh, gee, I wonder why. Yeah. It's because of fucking Bill Clinton. Yep. That's why. It's because it, they would cover a lot of their own they would shit as well. Every, it's because these was, people are monsters. That was what was breathtaking about, about the 2016 election. It's because you watched Trump and you thought, well, yeah, these are all going to destroy him. Every single one of these negative things. But every single negative story about Trump had a mirrored story about the Clintons. Now, sometimes you could argue they were trumped up or they weren't fair, but they were credible. And every single element, like the sex stuff, Clinton was a sex mm-hmm. monster. His, his incredibly scandalous uh, tax fraud uh, charity, Clinton Foundation. Yep. His, his unfair business practices, maybe not the Clintons, but everyone who donates to the Clintons for sure, like high M- because that is... They are all the same. They're all the same in that they're all powerful people, and this is how extremely powerful people conduct themselves. And also the fact that literally all of them were not just friends with Jeffrey Epstein, but also Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. It's amazing. It's just it's a cra- it's un fucking believable. It's amazing. It's, it's this like Janice it's the same Teddy monster r- ruling over us. The same hundred people who were f- friends with the same five people who were responsible for probably 80% of rapes in America for like 20 years. It's fucking and insane. Somehow, it's insane. And it's somehow it's, like, it's that we take anything from it, but like this is a completely rotted out yes, system. This is that's what's insane. These disgusting, this just like cadre of the fucking cast of Sallow. Just disgusting hogs at the top of the trough, just shitting all and jizzing all over us. And we look up at this, and the mass majority of insist on saying, you know, it's that one really big fat hog up there. He's causing all the trouble. And if we got rid of him, then we'd be fine. Because, like, that's the Clinton people who are so horrified by Trump when they're buddy buddy. And it's the same with these Trump idiots who somehow think that Trump is not embedded in this network of corruption and double dealing and crony capitalism and literal child abuse. Look at look at both sides explanations for like 
why Trump and Hi- and the Clintons were friends until like 2015 or 2016. It's for Hillary. It's like, oh, she attended. They attended his wedding yeah. ironically. Yeah. And then <laughs> for for Trump, it's like, oh, they were friends with him until he decided to speak out about what was really going right, on. Right. They just, you, it is a level of dilute. It's their show. They're watching their shows. Yes, you. Do, there is no no one to one follow through. There is no. You can't connect the dots. All these people were friends with each other, and they're just vying for the same piece of this pie. And they're all in this horrifying fucking goblin world together. Because it's, was- it's you make it into pro wrestling. Yeah, <gasps> Donald Trump turned face. But when he <laughs> went on the, down the escalator and called Mexican rapists, yes, or, exactly. Hillary exactly. Clinton was on an undercover irony mission. Exactly. But like, it's like they're watching TV and they're getting so mad at it. And it's like you could turn the TV off or smash the TV. It's like, yeah, but I'm watching. I like it. It's like if they if they if they changed it, they wouldn't, if they changed it, they wouldn't be able to enjoy it at the same sort of libidinal fucking diploma voyeuristic net, uh, mindset that they have. I mean, like Clinton's aside. I mean, like, again, it goes back to just like the, the worst candidate you could run against well, Trump for like, for every ever. Race, just only ever. One, like, only one, only one, just only un- one. uniquely uh, vulnerable. Only to, you know. Uh, but like, okay, just going forward, like Jim Jordan, right? How he's like the head of the House Freedom Caucus yeah. or one of the top guys. The House Freedom Caucus, like, probably like. A, a nucleus of power and people that represent like a clear and present danger to all life on the planet. Yes. Like that, that should be rooted out, you know, entirely that they're an enemy of like, not just civil society, but like our continued existence on this planet. Like the, the most hooting baying evil psychos that this country is Monstrous. capable of producing. Just the, uh, yeah. How, like how hard would it be? You know, talk about identifying a villain exaggerating making it on just tie that fucking wrestling doctor to the house freedom caucus and put his picture just call them the house pedophilia caucus yeah, republicans from now on fucking milk toast ass nancy pelosi and the che guevara they, they said San- every so, single fucking you know democrat to her no nancy matter what pelosi, they do nancy pelosi they, what does they always say san francisco values yep. start saying jim jordan values yeah, yeah, yeah but when you're thinking about you know like Oh, wait, but Chuck Schumer's imaginary Long Island couple actually likes pedophile wrestling coaches. <laughs> yeah. The, so, ma- the invisible people that tail him everywhere. Uh, how about, oh, uh, just news this week. Uh, Bill Shine, former VP yeah. of Fox News, who, who literally covered up yeah. and threatened, covered up all of the fucking rapes and sexual abuse that was going on there, threatened all of the women who tried to come yes. forward about it presided over a massive cover-up yep. of a ring of untold abuse yes. and horrors of which we really only have like a keyhole view of like but if you of what we know already is bone chilling enough imagine what was going on that we don't know about monstrous yeah like uns, unspeakable that asshole's now uh, working in the Trump White House Woo! ding okay back again I mean like is anyone is anyone in the supposed opposition party just gonna like do what they've done to the Clintons and not without fucking good cause. Yeah, but you have to okay? cut the Clintons off. You're you right. Cut the Clintons off. And look what happens if you do that. Like Gillibrand. You would remember when Felipe Reyes is like, I'll fucking end this bitch. Yeah, she's <laughs> dead. It's over. Yeah. And, oh, my and, I God. I mean, I don't know how, how bad that's hurt her, but. Probably not they, very bad. Probably not that bad because she made the, she's very canny and she made the calculated move that the Clintons are weak enough now to move against. Well, Gillibrand's and a that's killer. smart. And I think she's correct about that. She made a calculated decision that by looking at the terrain the clintons are waning not going to be able to hurt her she gains more from denouncing them and cutting them off and being able to you know criticize off of them and i think she was probably right but if you're not that bold or maybe not that smart you're still scared of the clintons well, gillibrand's a killer gillibrand yeah. has like a, a absolutely preternatural like level of instinct and sort of knowing when to do the right move except for ind- endorsing crowley over ocasio no, but, and then uh, she tried to flip it yeah, but but um, it's not that they're afraid of Clinton. It's they're afraid of not getting money from Hayam Saban. They're yeah. afraid of not getting money from what's that yeah, fucking yeah. billboard asshole Stayer? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Tom Stayer. Yeah, because yeah. they got the hand on the fucking chicken switch. Yeah. Here's the thing, at, at you know the the highest levels of power. I mean, it's like almost guaranteed that like you know one out of every five of every one of these guys is some kind of predator. Yes. Oh, right? absolutely. So if you want to like you know. Uh, inoculate yourself against like either the people in power or your donors having this come back to bite you in your ass how about this don't take their money don't hang out whoa, with them get whoa. better fucking getting politicians crazy. getting crazy getting crazy <laughs> you know 
Yeah, cut off the fucking Clintons. Cut them off. Yeah. They're no, poison. Not, not even the Clintons. They're fucking the poison. Clintons, the Clintons are going to be dead from like a fucking prine you can only get from vegan hot dogs in a few <laughs> years. Like they don't matter. What matters is their donors. Their yep. donors are what matters. No yeah, but you got to cut yeah. off the conduit. The, they have a million other people they can go through, though. Well, get rid of them, too. Corey you got to get rid of all get, of them. Yeah. You got to get rid of all yeah. the actual political people who are connected to this this disgusting capillary fucking action. Again, the, the, like, all these people who, who give money to both parties equally. The yes. Koch brothers... They, they more money to Cuomo money, than the Scott yeah. Walker. Donald Trump gave money to Cuomo. Yeah. Cuomo won't even give it back. He gave money to Cuomo. He gave money to a billion fucking Democrats. He gave it to Rahm Emanuel. How much more do you need to know? Again, all these people are friends with each other. All of and them. And guess what? They're probably all depraved, de sexually depraved monsters and predators. We know for a fact that that is how they sort of initiate themselves into the really high levels of like evil. It's like how you can tell us that somebody's trustworthy because you know their secrets. All right. We should, we should, yeah, we should move on. Deep. Okay, boys. All right. Here's a palate cleanse for you. In our reading series to close out this episode, I have... We are returning again to the Gray Lady, the New York Times, Ooh. in an absolute doozy of an article that I knew we had to do on the show as soon as I saw it. Um, I guess this is sort of a, uh, uh, this would be a pairing with uh, our live show in San Francisco when we did the article about the sort of uh, utopian community in Montana that's being planned by a group of tech bros yes. and the people who uh, frequent it. This is another... This is an article that provides another another peek inside the the minds, lives, and spirits of Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur titans. Yes, okay, our fellas? new our new philosopher kings. Yeah, the headline is: Tech elites recreate Burning Man inside their living rooms, like mm -hmm. a modern. Okay, here this is by Alex Williams, and the subhead is. Like a modern version of a medieval minstrel, mm. a singer named Jess Magic okay. is helping A-list entrepreneurs get in touch yeah. with their inner child in private song versations. Ooh. Song versations. Ooh, I guess okay. I don't feel so good. Can you imagine where? Okay, my tummy Ooh. hurts. I okay, kinda, I'm getting Let's faint. Look. Can Let's I see. talk to Matt's tummy? <sighs> oh, my Let's tummy begin. Hurts. I'm, I'm gonna need you to stop hurting my homie. To Chad Moretta, a Silicon Valley app guru, the intimate salons of Jess Magic, a new age troubadour, are like drugs without taking anything. Sounds this is great. This, this is where we're at now. Uh, rich people are getting high without taking drugs. Yeah. It's as much fun as just holding your breath for a long time. Think about how fucking lame that is. You know how we just spent like 40 minutes talking about every depraved thing rich people do? This is, this is how go. cursed the new generation of rich people are. <laughs> they do just as much harm to the world, but they're like, oh, uh, we get high by listening to uh, new low bass rhythms that yeah. open neural pathways to yeah. us. Just We've invented that. a new way of drinking water. Oh, God. Between that and like the dark magic of Bohemian Grove or something, I would just take that. Give me, yeah. give me, the, give me the Hellfire Give Club. me the yellow king. Off. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to Sanjeev Sidhu, a so-called software savant whose fortune was once estimated at over $6 billion, Awesome. Ms. Magic's invitation-only salons are the perfect escape from a business culture where one upsmanship is crowding out our need to connect. Damn. Makes you think. To Jason Silva, a tech futurist and Brian's TV brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he started the app Grotator. <laughs> <laughs> Send some shots to your fit. <laughs> okay, Jason Silva. No, possibly related to Brian, <laughs> is uh, the tech futurist and TV personality. Uh, to her, uh, her gatherings are a safe space for entrepreneurs who sacrifice friendships, relationships, and time only to realize that it's lonely at the top. Boom. Tech elites are, who are looking for more than extra zeros in their bank statements are finding it, an, finding it in an unlikely place. So-called songversations emotion-heavy gatherings that combine philosophical rap sessions with improvised music run by a ukulele-strumming songstress who describes herself oh, no. as a heartist. Oh, no. So not only do we have no. songversations being uh, coined no. here, but also the, the title, Heartist. 
Why are you? Doing I'm not an this artist. I'm a heart. Yeah. Why not, are they doing this to us? I, By the way, I um, I have to say, I kind of um, the people who are like giving these fucking Borg humans therapy with music and probably charging them like hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Could, like, good for if you. This is if just, you're getting over on them like this, good for you. Honestly, if Just Magic is like an elaborate con and she was like, good for you her. Know, but just if they're inflicting on it, just. In it on a, on us is just so enervating. I mean, can't you just hunt us from horseback for sport like your ancestors did? Why do you gotta torture us like this, you rich fucks? Branded as soul soul salons, mm. they import the cosmic explorer sensibility of Burning Man okay. into the cozy living rooms of prominent entrepreneurs, where they sing freestyle on topics as diverse as environmental degradation and heartbreak. Think of it as a free jazz equivalent of an Esalen retreat. Mm, I would love to. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I'm doing it right now. The tech A-list is a curious place to land for Ms. Magic, 37, who speaks in the soothing tones of a massage therapist and de divides her time between Cardiff, California and Bali, Indonesia. Despite her wood, Isis. <laughs> despite her wood nymph aura, or maybe because of it, Ms. Magic has found herself in some button-down circles. In 2016, she performed at the Women Economic Forum in New Delhi and at a star-studded birthday party of her friend Ken Howery, a founder of PayPal, on Necker Island. God, again, we, we talk, we've talked about New Zealand. You're so rich, you almost name your island the N-word. <laughs> we've talked on this episode about uh, Nantucket, yeah. Jeffrey Epstein's private yep. uh, child sex abuse island, yep. and now Necker Island. Yep. These rich people and their islands, man. It's getting uh. out of control. She goes, he goes, I don't know if you'd call this a breakthrough, she said, but I got Peter Thiel to sing along and Elon Musk to smile. Uh, the awesome. fucking, the, uh, that guy, um, fucking uh, Thiel, uh, Musk, the fucking PayPal sounds like it's working. Where the hell gate opened? Like somebody opened the lament configuration in the offices of PayPal in those early days. Those yeah, people are by cursed the way, Cenobites. Yeah, we, we, need, we, need, we need Arnold to go back in time. Yes. And destroy PayPal. Mm -hmm. Like, think about where our world would be. Yeah, go in there with a minigun. By the way, uh, update on Elon Musk. He is uh, huh. just riffing on Twitter about how he can use his magical inventive powers to save those uh, children that are trapped in a cave in God Thailand. Damn it. And what he came up with was uh, basically personal submarine, child sized submarines for the children. And he was doing this all on Twitter, and like his asinine, insane fans were like, Pretty cool, Elon. Could we fit an iPod in there for the long, dark journey? Oh, God. And oh, uh, Dave Anthony replied. He even had a little sketch of it. And it's just like, oh, it's like the Lyle Landley monorail sketch. Oh, where it's like oh suckers, me, money. There's a little sketch of it with like a kid in like this little, again, child-sized submarine. And Dave Anthony responded, cool coffin. <laughs> 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 well, you know what it is. It's the, all these people who think that this is going to save the world with his Tony Stark like inventions. They, of course, turned to him and said, Oh my God, of course you're going to do it. And he's like, Yes, I will do the thing. Hold on. Let's think of something. And he's just drawing it out so that somebody else can do it first. And then he can say, So he's like, They're, they're finally getting the kids out. He's like, Oh, submarines. Oh, man. If it had been a little bit longer, I swear to God, I would have made He's the like, submarines. Man, you are so fucking lucky I wasn't there. I would have saved those kids even better. He rocks. Uh, I, think, I think Jake Flores pointed it out, but like, what is the likelihood, do you think, that Elon was already developing some sort of personal submarine for rich people? And this is like the perfect. Like, I was inspired rollout. by a Danish inventor. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. His vision for personal freedom and, uh, and dating uh, uh, really inspired me. So, okay, here we go. Ms. Magic, who seems to approach every topic with a sense of giddy wonder. Oh, God. <laughs> imagine oh, no. knowing a person no, like I that, wanna, though. I don't want to imagine it. Leave Think of alone. someone in your life who, who, who greets every day with childlike wonderment. Leave me alone. I don't want to <laughs> do that. No. Stop. So she goes, as if she just fell in love five minutes ago, oh, believes that her appeal is rooted in the spiritual hollowness so many business elites feel oh. despite their wealth. No, sorry. Your spiritual hollowness comes from your wealth. Yes. There is literally not yeah. any major religion in the world that doesn't teach some element of the fact that being rich separates yes. you from God yes. or some sort your of universal man. oneness or however you want to put it. Wealth 
makes you a worse person. Yes. Every major religion it, it holds that to be true. So no wonder these fucking assholes who got who are worth six billion dollars because they invented invested in apps. Yeah. Are feeling spiritually empty. It's amazing. So it's because guys, you are. Yeah, these guys go and they tour like the factory that their company is subletting in Beijing, and they, where they're making the materials, and that's what's giving them their astronomical fucking margins that have made these these billions. And they're like touring the plants, and they see the people, and they see the suicide nets, and they hear, yeah, four last month, and then they come home and they go, God, I feel really empty and hollow inside. I feel. Like all of this is just nothing. I don't understand. Yeah, time, it. time to fucking you know take Molly and yeah. like you know or do whatever. I mean, I think maybe that's why these people are attracted to these like I don't know. It's new, a solution. New agey, vaguely Eastern spirituality because you know for all its flaws, at least Christianity, Jesus Christ literally said rich people yeah. are, can't get into yeah. heaven, and and they they just get they get like a customized uh, version of sort of a vague Eastern spirituality that beyond everything is totally accommodating to their lifestyle tells so us. listen to what nothing it's all within nothing you do changes anything. listen to what Ms. i mean i think it's like purely cultural because people have obviously found a way to square the circle of scriptures talking about wealth and uh being mormon or being an american evangelical or a catholic or whatever i think it's more just like i mean it reminds me when uh matt said that the equivalent of becoming a born again after a particularly horrible accusation or drunken escapade in California as you become a born again Buddhist. Yeah. This is just it's just California bullshit. That's yeah. all it, oh, yeah, is. So it, it is. just No, but yeah. that's the difference. They're yeah. Cal they have a California bullshit that makes them have to have to uh they have to grapple with something that's ostensibly against their ethics. Which yeah, other and that, rich people don't. They don't care. And that's not to say Buddhism is California bullshit because it's not. It's that in the same way that like American Christianity is yeah. like yeah, fucking American bullshit. This is this interpretation of being a tech well, douchebag who still has billions of dollars while pretending to be. A it Buddhist. got exposed California to money, bullshit. and that's what curdles it all. It so, sort of like uh, rusts the Hulk of all of it. Listen yeah. to this, uh, Ms. Magic, uh, who seems to approach Ms. Ma she's like she's basically like an adult version of a children's birthday party <laughs> performer. That's what this yeah, shit yeah. is. She's like a magician or someone who brings pets around to parties. Or, makes you sing songs. This is like children's birthday parties. Uh, she says here, the finance and tech scene is still riding the waves of hyper-masculine values, she said. Coffee to get through the day, alcohol to wind down, then sleeping pills at night to turn off the mind from all that they have going on. Yeah, you know that very macho thing where you drink coffee in the morning and then have a drink when you get home from work and then like need some sort of sleep aid to go to bed? Yeah. You got, yeah, you know, we're men's men, so we do that. But, you know, to our... Our lady listeners, they probably they're probably not aware of such a thing of, you know, being lashed to a job that uh, taxes your sanity and needing chemical stimulants to be able to cope uh, to go either up, down or asleep. That's hyper masculine. OK, here, here is the kicker. Here is the kicker. Ms. Magic says people forget that they are human beings rather than human doings. Oh, my God. Which oh, is oh. literally a verbatim quote mm -hmm. from The Simpsons. Brad Goodman. This is Brad Goodman, who was a new age guru on a, again, an episode of The Simpsons that is probably 30 years yes. old at this point. Yes. Literally wrote that line for her. When, as soon as you stop, beca Listen to stop this, being Matt. a human being, you become a human being. Listen doing. to this. It gets better. Enter the soul salon, which Ms. Magic calls a play date for your inner child. Basically, another line taken verbatim Be from like that episode. Boy. Be like the boy. Be we like, like Roy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a play date for your inner child and performs as a gift, she said, although guests are invited to contribute in accordance with the value yeah. they feel received. We do accept uh, American Express. So she goes here, uh, the salons usually start with a theme. Say the emptiness of consumer culture. <laughs> oh, weird. As key phrases arise, Ms. Magic will begin strumming and humming, weaving those lines of dialogues into a lilting melody. Mm -hmm. The effect is vaguely akin to Joni Mitchell performing, performing freestyle rap at Davos. Uh, wow. Uh, the I, know, is... I know what <laughs> awful sentence will be stuck in my head replacing F-35 beast mode from earlier this week. I, I know what fucking virus is implanted in my front I'm saying lobe. I just got leukemia. Don't say I'm it again. it again. Don't ever say Don't it again. Don't say it three times the or effect, we're fucked. The effect is vaguely akin oh, to God. Joni Mitchell performing oh, freestyle rap Fuck. at Davos. Don't say it again. 
You know, effect like is Evil vaguely Dead. akin no, to Joni no. Mitchell performing freestyle oh, rap shit. at Matt, Davos. Oh, you I, idiot. You fucking moron. Matt, I'm going to call 911. Do you want to reach for a cop service weapon at the same time <laughs> as me? <laughs> Fuck. We're going to turn into demons like fucking Evil Dead In now. the Ooh, mouth of madness. Shit. This is the Necronomicon. Oh, right? God, God damn it. Dude. Do you read that sucks so Ms. Much. Magic? Do you read Sutter Cade? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Do you God. think Ms. Magic is aware of logic, Felix? I don't want to think about it. <laughs> I don't even want to. I'm think talking about, about the rapper. I know. Not, not I don't want to think about it at all. I don't want to. I don't like it. I don't like where this is going. I know it's yeah. to a lot of cursed places. My my, my mind is a blade stabbing with the metaphors of the corporation across the nation. Oh, I made a really bad white guy rap uh, this week. Do you want to hear? Yeah, it? let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's do. Okay. Let's do so our own Ms. Magic okay, session. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I have to pull it up. When I'm hysterical, I'm electrical. Sean Patrick like powder. I'm powerful. You've got bars. I've got an Eiffel Tower full. (laughs) I told you it was bad. I told you it sucked. I told you you'd fucking hate it so much. (laughs) Here's the end. Did you did you did you hear uh, Michael's SoundCloud rap? uh, White guy SoundCloud rap on the stream? No, I didn't hear it. This shit hurts, and I know that it's true. Smoking on that hoobah stank, and the reason is you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Here's the end of Ms. Magic. As the music swirled, Charles Eisenstein, a proponent of what he calls sacred economics, talked about the unend- oh. talked about the unending human injury to Mother Earth. Oh. If you knew she could feel, would you stop? He said. When his monologue wound down, Ms. Magic rose and began a Nora, Nora Jones style ballad, picking up phrases from Mr. Eisenstein's talk. If we believed, she sang in a soulful jazz scat, that me, that me that me and the river were the same, would it change my ways? <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit. At oh, fir- my God. Fir- this I, is not, this I is, felt a fucking cat crawl over my soul. This is mind No, that, that was Marty. This is oh. fucking mind heads from Bowfinger. <laughs> oh, my God. God, I Jesus was chilling. Christ. I can. It's fucking 70 degrees here, and I see the breath in front of my face after hearing that. At Fuck th- this me. is darker than Jim Jordan or Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> oh, this is, this I was is... like, we <sighs> little behind the scenes. Like we were like, okay, what are we gonna do after this segment? And we had like two options. And I was like, oh, that'll be like a fun tone shift. Like it will be, yeah. You know, we just went pretty on the lighter heavy. side. Yeah. And Instead, this... we just fell into a fucking dungeon of horrors. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. At first, the audience sat silent, seemingly puzzled. But slowly, people began to clap their hands and sway to the beat. A man with a floppy hat and wizard-like robe began to gyrate wildly around the dance sure floor. Did. It's Burning Man in Chelsea, one observer said. Ooh. And that is, yeah. that's it. You know, that's, that's, well, that's, that's, I'm, I'm never, that's what people are into. I'm never you know? going to sleep again. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Sleep no more. Another yeah. another goofy thing rich people are into. Oh, they love that shit. <laughs> I love to get I love to get groped by a guy in a mask. It's Shakespeare, Matt. Come that on. Sucks. Get out of here uh, with that. All right. Well, that about does it for this week's show. Before we go, I would like to do a plug. Mm. Uh, the plug is, of course, for our, our book that's coming out Boom. in uh, at August twenty first. Yep. Uh, the publication date is coming up. I uh, we went long today, so I'm going to spare you uh, a reading from the book. But I would like to say, you know, when we do the, the the free episodes, they get about, you know, between let's say 120, 150 thousand listens per episode. Mm-hmm. If every one of you who listened bought the book, then we would be guaranteed that our book would blow away every single other New York Times bestseller. It's true. It would blow away Dan Fife Dog. It would. Go on. Blow, it would blow away Bill all O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly's books. Get the fuck Hillary out of Clinton's here. Hillary Clinton's book. Oh, God. Jeffrey Epstein's America. book. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein's book. <laughs> it would blow away. Mark Levin's books. All of those books. It would be swept away. I mean, it would become such a phenomenon that everyone who we talk about on this show who you hate would have to either attempt to kiss our ass or talk about us like we are the thing destroying it's America. It's true. David Brooks will have to write a column about Chapo Trap House Absolutely. if we hit the top of the New York Times yep. bestseller list, and which, again, very easily could happen if everyone listening to this buys a copy And of the remember, book. what would we said on this show over and over again? Politics is just spite now. That's what politics is. And you are not any better than that, folks. Politics is spite. Spite the hogs. Spite the, t- the scum. Spite the donuts. 
Just own everyone. I would by say, the book. you know, I mean, granted, it's it's I I, I do feel a little sheepish uh, telling you to buy things, but the fact of the matter is, we are selling something, and I'd like you to buy it. So, if twenty dollars is, I would say, a pretty good investment in a possible future in which uh, someone cries on television as they read from our book. Hell, yes. As they weep. However, I will also say, if that's all you got, that would be worth it. But for your money, you will also be getting a damn funny and entertaining book. Quality tome. I just want to say that uh, I just finished reading the book this weekend, and uh, I was a fan before I was an employee, and I know I'm probably the most biased person on earth to uh, review this book. Other than because we will themselves. start paying Chris if the book sells. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do it so I can eat. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I mean it. But um, it, the book is exactly what you would want from a Chapo Trap House. That's book. right. It is very That's good. That's right. We'll uh, give you back your child as long as you say. All right. I, all right. I, I, and finally. I, yeah, I have a plug. Um, a listener got in contact with me uh, this week about Stony Book Apartments in Riviera Beach, Florida. It is a black mold and just filled with just massive safety violations. Section 8 housing development. In Florida, it's owned by Millennia. Millennia. Now, every time I say Millennia, I feel like I'm saying Melania Property Group, which was founded by uh, the Sinetto family, who were capo regimes in the Cleveland mob. Now owned by uh, Frank Sinetto or Thomas Sinetto's son, Frank, uh, who's very in tight with Marco Rubio. Uh, the listener got in contact with me because there are so many fucking safety violations, just health code shit the type of things we heard about before Grenfell going on here. And this woman uh, got her car vandalized when she tried uh, organizing a tenants meeting. Uh, Want to make more people aware of it. We're putting the article in the description of this episode. Uh, Marco Rubio is very tight with the Senados. He's very tight with the people who are exploiting these low income people in this housing development. And Marco Rubio also seems to like to get abused for some reason, and you can somehow conjure him on TV if you abuse him enough. So call Marco Rubio's office about this housing development, and the uh, article will be in the description. And look, there was a lot of talk about Grenfell. There was a lot of talk about what, what its implications were to the world at large, how we treat our underclass in our cities after, and it was very righteous. But the less exciting thing for people to do is to catch these things before they happen. And I feel like this is a case of that. So we'll try to put every bit of pertinent info in the description for this episode. I'd also, again, third final plug, uh, housing rights and public housing are also is a huge part of our friend Julia Salazar's campaign for New York State Senate. Uh, so again, if you haven't done so already, I would encourage you to check out her campaign and uh, donate if you can or if the mood strikes you. Yeah, and also uh, there will be a, a bonus episode this week. Uh, you will get to hear our own Virgil Texas interview Julia Salazar uh, from last week about her campaign and some of these uh, housing issues that Julia has worked on. So uh, that about does it for this week, guys. Till next time. Bye. Yeah. 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 Bye. Yeah.